Hello! In this video I will show you how to use a welder cable to measure alternator current with a voltmeter. I will explain why is it scientifically possible and I will reveal to you the secret hidden in Ohm's law equation. But now I must warn you. Arcing and tremendous heat can be reached when you short circuit the battery. This condition can lead to a fire. Since you don't want to burn down your car, garage or home, please treat this video as informative and entertaining. Do not try this at home. Besides, the cost of clamp meters these days is a joke. I spent 15 Canadian dollars on this lobster and it measures up to 1000 amps DC. So you are saying you don't need a lobster to measure high electric current. Wanna see it, eh? Let's do it! Here I have a piece of wire that is capable of carrying current of about 60 amps and even more for a brief time. Two old 50 amp clamps. The cable is pure copper and this is important for good connection. You can use an old jumper cable, but still, pure copper. Here is my table to isolate my experiment from the metal body parts. And here is my thick cable with clamps attached on both sides. It will be important later to tell them apart. I also have here a regular car bulb with cables and banana plugs at the ends. A multimeter that can measure millivolts. I plug in leads, one to the common and the second to 10 amps port. Obviously this meter is limited to only 10 amps and will not measure high current from the alternator. But the purpose of this video is to show you how to go around this limitation. One banana plug for the bulb goes to the positive battery terminal. The second goes to the ammeter. The second port of the meter is connected to the negative battery terminal. The current flows, the bulb is on. Here you have the connections diagram. When the engine is running, I read a bit over 2.1 amps of current. I must remember this value because I will gauge my shunt to this value in millivolts. Some of you already know what I'm doing. Do you? I change plugs to the voltmeter setting and from now on the leads will stay there. I put one clamp on the negative battery terminal. One of the meter leads goes there as well. I put a thick and sharp piece of copper wire into the alligator of the second lead. I start the car and attach the second bulb lead to the end of the thick cable. The current is flowing, the bulb is lit. I turn on the multimeter into millivolts. All connections as on the drawing. Touching this point I read about 5 millivolts. I know you cannot see the readings but right now it is not important. When I touch the negative battery post I read 0. Now by piercing the thick cable insulation I look for 2.1 millivolts steady reading. Why 2.1 millivolts? Because the bulb was drawing 2.1 amps. After a few attempts I found the point with steady 2.1 millivolts. Now I will remove part of the insulation from this point. The copper wire is exposed at this specific point. Let's check it again. This time you will see. So right now I read 2.1 millivolts drop on this wire distance. My shunt is gauged. 
I shut the engine and get rid of the bulb. Bad bulb. Bad. Now I disconnect the negative battery cable and hook up the right side of my cable. I connect the second end of the disconnected battery cable. Right now the whole current flows through my cable, the shunt, as shown on this diagram. The voltmeter lead stays at the point I have found earlier, and the second lead goes to the negative battery terminal. I start the engine. Turn on the meter. And I read 8.6, 7 7.6, 7, 6.6 mV. It goes down to around 3.5 mV. And drops again. Now I have 1.8 mV and I use a clamp meter to measure the current. 1.8 mV is close enough to 1.9 amps. It looks like I measure the current with the voltmeter. And I will even trust the voltmeter more than the clamp meter that can pick up some interference. Now I move to the alternator. I will disconnect this point. Here I have a spare alternator and I can better show you which point I'm talking about. I use port B+. The right side of the shunt is connected to the B+. The shunt curves upward and we have here meter lead attached. The other end of my cable grabs the connector disconnected from B plus point. The second lead from the meter goes on B plus point on the alternator. Here you have connections made. I start the engine and read 41 millivolts or rather 41 amps. The amperage drops and settles at about 37 amps. When I turn off the lights, reading drops to about 27 amps. Let's give a chance to my cheapo lobster. The readings are not spot on, but again, I would rather rely on voltmeter readings since the clamp meter can pick up some interference. Let me explain now why I can use voltmeter to measure electric current. First of all, because I live in a free country and I can do whatever I want. Second, I can use Ohm's law. Consider an electric circuit of DC current flowing in and out of an element, heater, bulb, whatever. Whether we like it or not, the current in this circuit, or any circuit, encounters resistance in electric conductors. Let's choose an interval on this conductor and focus on its resistance. When we connect a voltmeter at the beginning and at the end of this interval, we can measure the voltage drop on this distance of the conductor. If we know the resistance value and we have the voltmeter reading, we can calculate the current flowing in this circuit. I did it the other way around. Knowing how much current is drawn by the bulb, I gauge the piece of wire to the same numerical value in millivolts. This way I have found the resistance value of my shunt equal to 1 milliohm. Since resistance is constant between endpoints of the shunt, the numerical value of millivolts corresponds to exactly the same numerical value of amperes.
constant ratio of millivolts to amps. Till next time. Hold on a second. You promised a secret. Oh yeah, the secret. When at school, it was difficult to memorize all those formulas. To make it easy, in the resistance equation, I plugged in units and noticed that volts and amperes form an hourglass. It was easy to remember since.